that whole. All right, we'll just start over. So, this is a tutorial for Java. So, first things first. Just gonna swim across here. Make sure you don't swim too far to the left, otherwise you'll spawn fish and they can do damage to you, which makes doing the next trick a lot harder. So, just... Swim across the middle and don't spawn the fish. So now, for the next trick, this jeep needs to have very low health. There's two ways to go about that. You can shoot it with the pistol, or you can jump in. And there's a little seam here you can drive up. Drive up the seam and shoot orders into the ground that will damage the jeep. You want it to be below really low, below 20% health. So... That's good. Drive around the long way. You do not want to spawn the alien wave in this town early. Park your jeep at the end of this little green road thing. Or whatever. Well, it's not a road. And up here... You can see there's a bright texture in front of me. Now for this next skip, there's a Goliath and we need him to charge the Jeep. But in order to um, get him into a good position, a very specific set of actions need to be done to manipulate him into the position I want. So I'm going to walk onto that bright spot. There's going to be two green aliens the Goliath and three little jumping aliens. I want to quickly shoot the two green aliens, turn my position, and shoot the three jumping aliens. As I'm doing this, the Goliath is going to charge the building on the right. After he does that, you can see off to the left there's a little green grassy area. You want to run to the tip of that, and the Goliath, if you do it right, he's going to turn and walk to you and probably bite you for a little bit of damage. After that, you want to start moving in the direction of your jeep. Hopefully, the Goliath will follow you, or turn towards you, and get in line with the jeep. And then you want to trigger him to charge. And after that, just run and jump in the jeep. And if you do it right, he should hit the jeep every time. So hopefully, I'll do it right. So Yeah, this is what you want. Unfortunately... The swim across here is very risky. Sometimes the fish will just kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. So hopefully, for the sake of continuing the tutorial, they won't kill me. Alright, they did it. Now here, this is a matter of personal preference. For me, it depends how much health I have, because I have almost full health. There's a cannon here, I'm just gonna ignore it and go to the processor. If you have, if you get hit by a bomb from the fish and don't have a lot of health, you should kill the cannon. Because you don't, because otherwise, if the cannon and the red bugs do enough damage to you, you can actually die at this processor. That's a lot of lag. I like to hesitate for a second here before walking, otherwise you'll get a stumble animation when you start to walk up the so For the sake of this, just to make sure I don't die, in runs I will not grab this health, but for the purpose of this I'm going to, just to make sure I don't die in the next turn. It's rare, but even with the amount of health I have, the majority of the time, I would survive the next town, but I just don't want to take the chance, so... A harvester wave is about to spawn in, and... This harvester wave will make a mutant very fast. Well, most of the time, it'll make a mutant very fast. So... You want to walk 
up towards here and see these green aliens, and you can see a little seam in the ground there. If you're to the left of that seam when you walk, you will not trigger any of the landmines. So, you want to make sure when you're walking here, you're to the left of the seam you can see in the ground. And... We're gonna go over and grab this Cooper wagon. And I didn't need the help, so... In this town... There's three things you can do here. You can just leave. You can just drive away and completely ignore the Harvester Wave. If you do that, you're going to get a mutant that you're going to have to deal with before the end of the stage better than 90% of the time. Alternatively, you can just kill the Harvester. If he's looking at you and his head is in plain view, that is what I would suggest, just because then you don't have to worry about the mutant at all. The third option, which is what I'm going to show you here, is turn around, run over the blobs, run over the clients, and then just run for it. This just disrupts the harvester wave and slows it down in here. This hill. You'll see where I'm aiming, and unfortunately I don't have time to de demonstrate lining it up because they're still going to be mutant fast. You can see where I'm pointing, you want to drive up this hill, every now and then tap to the left, when you get to the top, jam it to the left. Now when you're on top of the hill, what you want to do is tap the brake and that'll get you over the hill, and I'm going to try to avoid damage here. Alright, so, you can tuck your car in this little corner to avoid getting hit by the, um, lightning from the jelly. If you don't take any damage from the mantids in the first time and have nearly full health with the Koopa Wagon, you don't need to do that. Because you'll be able to kill the jelly before it destroys your, your Koopa Wagon and you can just keep going. Drive over that, that's pretty simple to do, and I'm gonna grab the tank. So far we don't have any mutant issues, which is good. So. Alright, I'm just gonna wait for the mutant. I mean, I'm gonna take this harvester wave out so it doesn't eat people for the sake of being able to finish a tutorial. Normally in the speed run, I'm not going to go over here. I want to take this guy out while I'm waiting for this mutant. control stick towards the rock and jump in the tank at the same time and you'll slide off the tank while jumping into the tank with which causes you to have altered hit detection and you'll just get in the door so that was grenade skip 
so now we gotta deal with the processor. There's two ways to deal with the processor. I'm gonna show the consistent method first, just to get by it. The consistent method, where you don't have to worry about dying at all, is to drive around here. You'll see this texture here, there's a cannon up here. Drive up here, kill this cannon. And then you can just get on here. You can drive back and forth to avoid his pulse shots. And he'll just die. I'm gonna pick his health up. This is enough health for um, Java 3. This is more than enough. He didn't drop it. Good, so. I move on. There's I want to come back here. Alright, so this is what we finished driving over. The other stuff for the processor, you can see this green stuff here. You can drive over here and head toward the processor this way. And you get yourself in this general area and you can just shoot up with the processor like that. But the positioning for this to be able to consistently hit the processor is much more precise. But if you do this after the processor, you're just going to turn and drive over here. And we're going to head into Grace 3. I mean Java 3. So, just jump over this, drive over this, and we're just going to we're just going to head up this road right from the beginning. There is a harvester wave down there, but we're not going to worry about it. So we're going to head over here. These mantids will never hit me. Now. We just ignore this harvester wave. Completely. You don't need to worry about it. Drive over here. You'll see, there's this little lower area here. You can drive over this, and then you can come over, and there's another one right here. It's easier to get over if you jiggle the joystick back and forth. And from here, we can just drive over here, and the people can't scaling up, but that's not a big deal. I mean, for beginning runners, the harvester wave I just passed, if you want to take it out, go ahead and take it out. I mean, it'll, like, lessen the chances of game overing with too many casualties in Java, which is actually possible with the raw I use. So, yeah, you can just drive up to the airfield, just like that. That's actually fairly easy to do. And we're going to grab a gyro pop. You want to fly a little bit south of west here. And there's going to be a big Buddha statue. Alright, we want to be on the left of the Buddha statue. And still flying a little bit south of, south of west. And... Story point now. As we continue to fly this way, you're going to see the green dot on the radar, that's actually a truck. You can use that, you can see right here, you can use that to find this little area right here, which from this point, oops, if we just turn this way, we can just go right at the processor and just shoot him in the face. All right, now. And at these trees, you want to turn south. And coming up is Storm Skip. This is a very, very luck reliant point. Because if the jelly slash lightning do a lot of damage to you, you're just going to lose a helicopter and there isn't much you can do. In order to actually get down with the gyrocopter and get out, you need the health that the processor drops. 
in order for him to actually drop his health, you need to minimize the number of aliens that you spawn when flying south to him, so... That's why I turned south, or specifically at those trees where I did. It's because I want to avoid spawning as many aliens as possible. And there's going to be a row of three houses in front of us coming up. Right there. And here, a roach gunner is going to spawn here. I like to fly south right over top of the roach gunner. And... Can you fly south? Oh, well, I'm taking damage. Alright, so right here. You can see on the left, you can see the processor beaming in. Right there. And unfortunately, I've taken a lot of damage from the lightning, so this is going to be problematic. So what you want to do, you want to dive in- Oh! Not good! And just kill the processor. I had to kill it faster. If I had more health, I would have bounced off it and killed it slower to put my helicopter in a better position. But this is still a good position, and that helped. And that's bad. I'm gonna lose a helicopter. Yep. All right. I'm just gonna. Ow. I'm just gonna wait for the save point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work. I'm gonna go in here. Yeah, that's a thing that can happen. The health did not go in a really good direction for me, so... I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna warp again. And I'm gonna... Save here. And... This is for early runners. If this happens, there's two things that you can do. There's something you can do for early runners if you don't have a good time yet, if you lose a helicopter. There's a backup. But... The reason I saved is because there's a chance I'm going to game over on casualties when I do the backup, so... The backup strategy... Where am I? Oh, I know where I am. We're going to warp back to Java 4. Is there's a trekker over here. This is a backup strategy. This costs like a minute, but... For beginning, but unless you're going for like legit sub hour times, you can the um, backup is still viable if what happens happens. So, you're gonna want to switch trekkers here. Over this bridge. back into Java 4. I, I 
actually never fly back into Java 4 from the tower. This is gonna be a little iffy. Alright, so let's fly back into Java 4. Now I'm gonna fly south a little bit. Because after Storm Skip, you're gonna be coming north. Well, if you escape with the helicopter, you're gonna be coming north along this shield wall. So you want to be a little off to the left of the shield wall as you approach it on the portal. You just kind of can just slide to it like that. And here, even with a successful storm skip, your gyrocopter is going to take a beating. So, there's two ways you can do this tower. The hard way, you can take the gyrocopter and do the base, same basic thing that you did against the Grease Tower. Stay just high enough so you don't get hit by the missiles, shoot the pods, land, drive around, and finish it off. But I'm, I'm gonna show you the safe way. The safe way is to just, this is a little slower, but for beginning runners, this is recommended. Just grab this bulldog, drive down here, turn around. If you turn this corner, start shooting. Take that part out. Do okay, that, and then we drive it on. This part out. And... That's a drama tower. Well... That is a strategy for, for beginning runners. I would recommend just taking the board back. It's... Because it's 100% consistent. Where the gyrocopter, even full health, it's it's risky now. The Java boss, this is completely different from the America boss. The crab, like, there's really, he just does whatever he wants. This guy, you can kind of push him around. So at the start, what you want to do, you want to slowly drive toward him. Take that out and then aim at one of the hands while very gradually driving towards him. Right when you destroy the hand, you want to start backing up and aiming at the hand. That took a lot of damage. Alright, there we go. So we're going to grab this up. Now we switch to our laser missiles and start working on this hand. Once again, same principle, when you destroy it, back up a little. And then you can just go to town on the laser missiles. And he's dead. That's a... I mean, with practice, that's just a really simple boss. So... Yeah, Java is the hardest region in the whole run, so... I mean, there's so much it can do wrong here, so this is just, it's just a very hard region to get through. Alright, 